Blender 2.8 has just been released. As I'm recording this video, just been put live on the website. Version 2.80 is now live. It's no longer a release candidate. It's no longer a beta version. It's very exciting stuff. It is now live, so that means as soon as somebody upgrades their, by default, I guess, their old version 2.79 is going to be overwritten and replaced with Blender 2.80, which is very cool. Also, as I'm recording this video, Christina is just live downloading the first beta version of Blender 2.81. Of course, development never stops. And it's very cool that they already have, on the same day on which the full version is released, they already have a beta version of the next version available. So that is very cool. I like it when software development progresses like that. Blender have a, a new policy of when updates are being released. I believe it was about three months until which a new version shall be released. So we should have a new Blender every three months, a new official Blender. And of course, there's been countless, literally countless beta versions in between. And this is a int nice introduction into something that I've been meaning to talk about for a while and uh, never really quite found the time to do. And it has to do with software development. And it is, and speaking of beta versions, it just fits right in here. It is regarding the future of DAS Studio. And one of the things that you may not be aware of is that DAS Studio is built with what's known as a framework. I don't know how well versed you are in the art of software developing or software development. Um, I'll just say that back in the day when we had home computers, it was enough to type a few lines of code into a terminal and type run, and that would run a program, get your adventure game started, or even that arcade-style 80s retro shooter game. So that's that was that, that was back in the days. But today, software development is so complex that it relies on other software packages to be installed on your computer, many, many such packages. And then you write some code and essentially you press a button that then often usually compiles the whole thing that then allows the computer to execute what you're actually building. And that's what we run. And sometimes that process is very complex and cumbersome and relies on many other tools to be installed on your computer. But usually a good installer will take care of all that so that we end up with something that we download, double click, it does some stuff, and then we click a button and run a program. And that's difficult enough to grasp and understand and work with and make software with if you're targeting one platform. Let's say Windows. If you're making a something whatever for windows then you have to follow a certain type of project a uh, uh, certain certain procedure there and out comes usually an exa file or something along those lines that you double click and it works on windows that's the fire engine behind me there luckily i'm not in the way but some of my fellow car drivers are there we are this is what we hear about 12 times a day this wasn't, this, although this was the fire engine, it was actually kind of an ambulance. They are, they are governed by the same people and that is where the hospital is. So I guess somebody with a heart attack is just now on the way to Mount Sinai Hospital. The wonderful friendly people who saved my life. There we go. Yes, so I hope this guy is gonna do, the guy, the girl, whoever is gonna do well. Yes, one of those things. Sorry, I got distracted there for a second. So yes, software development. All that is difficult enough if you're targeting a single platform. But of course, it, say, you know, you're targeting Windows and you have got this executable file that works on Windows. Take the same file and try and execute it on a Mac. It's not gonna work. And the reason for that is, of course, that if you target another platform, you not only have to, you do have to use a different compiling process to make that work. If you want to have the same software running on both target platforms or more than one target platform, say, you know, Mac, Windows, and perhaps Android and iOS, for example, those are four big ones. And perhaps on top of that, you also want to want this thing to run on Linux. 
then there are the, either you have to write the same software five times which is insane especially for for finding errors and all that or you have to use something called a framework now that makes things even more complicated in software development but it makes it then easy to write your code once and then basically deploy your application to several target platforms and they look more or less identical so there's always things that are unique to each target platform for example the file dialogues are different on Mac and Windows but essentially they serve the same purpose which is get you access to the file so while the boxes that will let you pick files look different they serve the same function and it really depends on what framework you use there. So Blender, for example, gets around it by having their own file open dialogues. They look the same on Linux, Mac and Windows, and that's because they've implemented that functionality themselves. But other platforms, they work differently with that sort of thing. So for example, um, uh, one of them, and that's the one I wanted to talk about, is the so-called Qt framework. That's a capital Q followed by a small t cute as in you know the, the song cute but spelled differently qt and that is a cross-platform open source now open source framework that allows you to write your code once and then deploy your application build your application on multiple platforms and big software companies like it because uh, even people like adobe use it so that they don't have to rewrite photoshop once for mac and once for windows because otherwise they'd go mental and there'd be issues that'd be creeping in and so forth. So that's what a framework is good for. And that's very cool. A framework also adds another layer of abstraction to the whole coding process, which, you know, once, once you learn it, once you get into a framework, that's all good. But my point is, this is a development tool. It's essentially a software. And as it is a sign of our times, nothing stands still for longer than maybe three to five years and versions change features come and go things get upgraded and you as a developer often don't really have a choice than to upgrade your stuff with them or alongside them like apple is terrible for that so they release a new version of xcode their integrated development environment once a year new features for ios and mac os are introduced and they support this year's operating system and last year's but not the one before and sometimes things change fundamentally and you have to literally find a new way to rewrite your old code so that it works with the latest version of whatever you're using in our case uh, the framework like the Qt framework now here's the here's the catch and this is why i'm a little concerned about the future of das studio they're using a particular version of the Qt framework which is Qt 4. So that's the fourth version of the Qt framework that was introduced and released. The current version is Qt 5 so that's one version higher and believe it or not Qt 5 was actually introduced in 2012. It's now 2019. The Qt foundation or whatever they're called the people who make the Qt framework they discontinued Qt4 several years ago. I forgot when, I believe uh, 2014, I don't remember exactly. They did discontinue it, it's no longer in development. So the version that the DAS developers are using to bring us DAS Studio is based on a very outdated framework. And there's only, it's gonna be, there's only gonna be so much time until they can pull that off and until it'll be virtually impossible for them to build something as complex as DAS Studio with a framework that no longer receives any patches from the people who write it. And that is, of course, literally putting the whole thing very much at risk. And this also explains why we haven't seen major upgrades. We've seen small additions that are integrated into the current environment there in DAS Studio, but we've not actually received like a major overhaul in many, many years, like over 15 years now. I remember when I started with DAS Studio, we had DAS Studio 2. That was, uh, that was one that was still in use. And they had also just released DAS Studio 3. 
and things were very different there and people were in the process of kind of getting there and upgrading and all that but two was still supported more or less when I started with Das Studio and I never I never got into Das Studio one that was that was off the table already by the time I got there so then a few years later Das Studio 3 was superseded by Das Studio 4.0 back then that was interesting introduced exciting new features such as one of the plans was that they were going to charge for Das Studio that's something that they had introduced in a kind of a free version then they had kind of an advanced version and then they had a pro version that is why sometimes you still see things oh there's the ambulance this is where the poor guy's been picked up from I guess anyway just quick flashback there to what happened earlier so uh, yes that is the reason why we sometimes still see Das Studio 4 Pro and Advanced and, and all that. So currently today it's all free because I guess they had to admit that business plan has failed and uh, it just didn't make any, any sense to them. And it also explains why some of the items that are part of Das Studio are built as a plugin, as an optional plugin. For example, the Texture Atlas and all that. That was something that was not supposed to be in the free version and only the advanced or pro versions could get it or you could get it by a plugin or what not. Anyway, point is, Qt5 upgrading the whole Das Studio thing. I mean, I don't know how, what it looks like under the hood, but I don't think it's as easy as clicking a button, checking a couple of tick boxes there. It's not as easy as that because the Qt framework has severely changed since version four. So one of the things that has been removed and replaced with something else is in fact Qt script. And that's something that allows users to extend the functionality of something that's built on top of the Qt framework with a simple scripting language that looks a little bit like JavaScript. In fact, it's based on ECMAScript. So it is very, very similar in syntax. And DAS have taken this and extended that and called it DZ script or DZ script or DAS script. And that is something that we can use inside a DAS studio and write simple scripts. And what we can do then is we can, uh, whatever, target the timeline, extract at which frame we are, move the timeline, grab the current object in the scene hierarchy and change it somehow. That's what scripts can do. And so they're very, very powerful, but and this is, this is the, the big, big issue for me. It's based on something that is no longer available in Qt5. And I'm not an expert on this. I don't know much about the Qt framework. All I can tell you is that there will be a point at which it'll be virtually impossible for them to push forward what they can currently do with Das Studio 4 point whatever. And I think what they perhaps should have done many years ago, switch over to this new Qt5 thing. But as I said, it probably involves major rewrites. Maybe they're waiting for Qt6 to be released and then do the majority of the work. It'll be a huge headache. It means not a single script as we know it today inside Das Studio will work anymore, unless there's some kind of clever way of transversing it, transcoding it, rejigging it. I don't know, really, really don't know. All I know is that Das script, as we know it, is no longer part of Qt5, and Qt5 is not something that the, that the developers are currently using for Das Studio. So I really don't know what that means, and how long we're gonna stay on the Das Studio 4 branch as it is, or what the developers have planned for long-term functionality of this. I mean, this getting into animations, and you've seen these all these uh, YouTube adverts probably, that are now coming out left, right, and center, trying to position DAS as, or DAS Studio rather, as the thing that makes animations cool, wonderful, super easy, and really quick to do, which <laughs> not entirely reality-based, but hey, that is what they're trying to convey, I guess. I really don't know if they're gonna shoot themselves in the foot if they don't upgrade the underlying framework that makes all this tick pretty soon. End of commentary. I'm gonna have to go to work now.